So if you wanted to actually uh, set up a Jellyfin media server on your computer, specifically on Linux Mint, well, this can be a fairly involved process if you don't really know what you're doing, or maybe you're not entirely sure about what all these instructions mean, especially if you're somebody who's just a general user and you're not doing too much with your computer. And so I'm gonna show you how to set up Jellyfin in Linux Mint, which is the operating system that I primarily use. And I'm gonna do it in a really easy and simple way. So instead of doing everything through command line, in Linux Mint, you could actually do everything through the software manager. So if you go here to admin and then software manager, then all you have to do is look up Jellyfin. And the top three results are Flathub, which is the one that I prefer. And so in this case, you're going to see three different things. You're going to see Jellyfin MPV Shim, Jellyfin Server, Jellyfin Media Player. And go ahead and install all three. And the server is going to be the main one. The media player is the client, and then the MPV shim will give you additional options, including things like transcoding and subtitles. So let's go ahead and install that, and we'll just continue with everything. So once you have everything installed, you should be able to see it in your menu. So if you go down here to your start, and then go to sound and video, you see three things, Jellyfin server, the MPV shim, and media player. And we're really only gonna be focusing on the server and media player. This part, it kind of runs on its own. So let's go ahead and start up Jellyfin server. And this is where you're gonna set up your server for Jellyfin and it's gonna be running off of the machine that you have right now. And so the Jellyfin server, it's actually gonna be running on your browser. So what's important here is to look up here at the address. The default is localhost 8096. So localhost is your computer and 8096 is the default port. So it's gonna ask you to actually set up. So this is a fairly easy process and you could always go back and change settings in the future. So preferred language, I'm gonna put English. Username, I'm just gonna make things really simple since this is just a test. And we'll go ahead and set up the next thing. And this is an important part. This is where you're gonna choose the folder where all your movies or shows are stored. So I'm gonna add media library. And the content type is important because it determines the type of metadata that it pulls from the internet. So I'm gonna choose movies and I'm gonna leave the display name the same. Um, and then here, the folders, you could choose the folder where it's at. And depending upon your computer, it could be in a variety of different places, but I have it on this folder and I have it in this folder right here. Okay. And then I'll say, okay. And then you could choose a preferred uh, download language. For me, it's gonna be English. Country is United States for me. Uh, and then here, there are some other things you could do. Uh, prefer embedded titles over file name, I'll leave that off. But in this case, uh, I do want to enable real-time monitoring. So if anything changes, it will change it. And then uh, I leave uh, automatically add to collection alone. And then for my metadata downloaders, where it's going to get all the metadata information, I just leave these alone. And then here you can automatically refresh metadata from the internet. I just put never for now. And then savers, I don't do anything here. And then all of these image fetchers, I'll leave those alone. And in this case for save artwork into media folders, I would highly recommend that you check those so you can store it on your machine. And similarly for your chapter images, I would check those as well say okay now it might take a while for things to load up so we're going to go to next and then next for your meta language and in this case i would not set up remote access right now if you are comfortable with that you could do that but i'm going to uncheck that and then uh, i'm going to leave that uh, both of these things unchecked and like i said you could always come back and change this later and then i'm done and now all you have to do is log in with the username and password that you just set up. Go sign in. And in this case, it might take a while for it to load everything up. Um, so you might have to wait a few minutes as it's pulling all the data from the internet. Okay, so after a while, it starts loading up data for the movies you have in your folder. And uh, also here, it's gonna load up later. It's gonna have a picture here. 
and you can also uh, change this later you could change the edit images as well uh, but I would just wait until everything loads up but as you can see here all my movies are here and for example if I were to just uh, play something you know it might buffer a little bit but uh, there it is it's awesome <laughs> it works and it looks pretty amazing now once that goes you pretty much have it running okay but uh, the server is running however what you want to do is access it through a client like for example you could download the Jellyfin client app on your mobile devices like your Android device iOS devices you could download it on other uh, devices like maybe a projector that's running Android or an Apple device and so in that case that is where you're going to be using the Jellyfin client okay so if you go back here and then go to your sound and video we'll open up uh, Jellyfin media player and this is going to be your client okay so this is important this is where you add your server now this is where having an IP address is important because this is based upon the IP address on your home network okay and in this case the default as I mentioned earlier it says localhost 8096 okay so that is your server but what if you actually wanted to connect to the IP address? So basically you're sharing this on your network. Well, you're gonna to need to find out the IP address of the machine that you're on. And so for Linux Mint, uh, one of the ways you can do that is open up a terminal and then type in IP address. Now it's gonna show you IP address. And the one you wanna look at is not this LO one. You wanna look at the second one. And then what I look at is this INET thing right here. So here's the IP address and then it goes to like 0.24. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and if for some reason uh, this doesn't work correctly uh, you might have to try it again so I'm going to copy this IP address and then uh, like this and then make sure you put port 8096 and there's many more ways you could do this but this is for beginners so if you have a separate server or even a separate domain you can use that as well so let's see if this works okay okay that didn't work so let's try this. Okay, so that one worked. So um, what I did was I just basically copied this part right here and then uh, put in uh, the colon uh, 8096, okay? So go ahead and put in my username and password. Sign in. Boom. So now you're using the client and there you go and if you wanted to change uh, some of these things okay uh, that's like more setup and configuration uh, but it's really cool that now you can use this and uh, at the same time you could also add different images as well uh, but that just goes to show that setting it up in Linux Mint is super easy and as you add more movies and stuff you know you'll be able to see that here and you could also look at other things like the info all of this is preloaded automatically and there's so many other features that this offers and at the same time you can download this Jellyfin client on your mobile devices you know on Android iOS and then you could connect the same way you would log into the server put in your username and password and there you go and that's for a setup on your home network super easy and I would say for a lot of people if you have Linux Mint and you simply go to your software manager you could get it all set up just like I had here so if you actually had any thoughts in this or any other ways in which you set up Jellyfin as your media server, be sure to leave in the comments area below and I'll see you on another episode. Hey geeks, if you are a brand new creator and you simply want something easy to get you started, well, I got something for you with my creator starter kit. This is a super simple step-by-step -step guide that's gonna take you from having no channel to developing your very first YouTube channel along with ideas, thumbnail designs, and other creator tips, including marketing. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and get started creating.